This is the VK7 RHF 29.680 FM repeater. Good morning and welcome to the VK7 RHF 10 meter amateur repeater system. I've been working on this for all this week and I've been doing some modifications to try and get it going. Now, actually this is the transmitter side of the repeater. Okay, so I've been doing some bits and pieces. It's absolutely chaos here on the workbench at the moment. What is a 10 meter repeater? Well, it's uh, there's lots and lots of these around the world. Um, some of them are not real documented on what ones are operational or what tones they use. This one uses a tone of 91.5 Hertz usually. And uh, it's on, as I said, 29680 megahertz FM. So you can have a listen out for this and you can work FM repeaters worldwide when the band opens we're going up towards the top of solar cycle 25 during sporadic e season usually in summer you can also easily work fm repeaters so uh, they're usually up in the top end of 10 meters so check them out so with a 10 meter repeater because the output is only separated from the input by 100 kilohertz it's very hard to have your transmitter and your receiver on the exact same site or very close to one another so generally what they do is they split the transmitter and the receiver and they link them using a UHF link. And that's what I actually used to do. You can see over here that I've got a couple of the UHF receivers here. And uh, this is my remote 10 meter receiver and linked into a UHF transmitter. That would then receive on uh, 10 meters, transmit out on 70 into one of these receivers, which would then be linked into our repeater controller, the Arcom RC210 there and then it would then link up to the transmitter. So that's how it used to work. The only problem with it was is that you would need multiple coaxes, you would need Yagi's for 70 centimeters to do the linking, um, you'd need extra power supplies and all this extra equipment. So um, this was actually a voting system as well. Uh, it was testing this LDG RVS8 voter to try and get it working with this, which I did. But then I sort of changed uh, my ideas and I actually used to use a, a Doug Hall voter, which is over here. This is a uh, Doug Hall 4RV2. So I used to use that. That actually used to work quite well um, for, for voting. So I've done away with that and I decided to move to uh, another system which you would be familiar with, which is the voter board. Voter board or the RTCM. This is the surface mount version of this. This, uh, this is... Uh, works with all-star all-star nodes so much like uh, an all-star node it connects in sends all of the voted received audio to uh, a, an all-star node the all-star node decides, decides which one is the best and then sends it back out to the transmitter in this case this so with all-star these little nodes here with the pies you would notice this little cherry pie hat um, four here and the Pi 3. These have USB channel drivers because they basically have a, I think it's a CM108, and they run that channel driver to send audio to and from the, the node. So this is a little bit different because this actually uses a Vota channel driver. All Star's built in with lots of different channel drivers that you can use, so this is the, this is the All Star one. And I built five of these boards. Three of these boards are currently running on our two meter repeater system. This is the fourth board. I've got another board, I think in the box over there, which I'm gonna use on one of the receivers. And then I've also got the RTCM as well. So with voting, when you send your audios from your receivers to the All-Star node, they all have to be timed correctly. And when they come back to the transmitter, they also need to be timed correctly. So you need a GPS. So what I'm using is a little QRP Labs QLG2. This is, I think, about $23 or $26. Very, very cheap. And what this does is this sends a one pulse per second signal to this board, which it needs for timing. And it also sends NMEA or NEMA data to this board. Now, this board outputs it at TTL levels, which this can't accept. It can only accept RS-232. So I've got a little level shifter here, which uh, TTL NEMA data comes out here. It's level shifted to RS-232 and then input into this board. And that works really, really well. So for 26 bucks, that's a good little option. And uh, all I've got to connect is my GPS antenna. This is an old MLS uh, GE General Electric MLS-1 um, radio. 
So I pulled out the transmitter. So this is the transmitter section. This is the VCO and control board. And this is the power amplifier. Now I didn't need the receiver out of this because I'm using some different receivers. But basically audio comes in here and this outputs about 60 watts, this power amplifier uh, here. And it's only rated, when the radio was only originally rated for 20% duty cycle. So I've mounted it on this big heat sink. And uh, there's also fans here in the top. There's a fan here that blows air directly over the top of the PA and um, some extraction fans here as well. You can see some uh, heat sink compound there on the bottom. And uh, I've just redone all that because it was a couple of years ago since I last did it. So I figured while it's here, I may as well make sure it hasn't gone dry. And uh, that's come up really well. I also had some coax here, some RG316, which just used to solder straight out of the the RF output of the PA to an end connector at the back, but that was a little bit messy. So I've put an SMA connector on there now, directly on the board, and an SMA to end here. So I'm just just about to make a patch cable using this um, semi-rigid cable, which you can get off of eBay. Um, I use this for a lot of my microwave stuff. The advantage of having this is that you can place the transmitter pretty much anywhere because it doesn't matter if there's RF or if it's a noisy site or anything. You generally put your transmitter at the best site and then as long as you've got IP, that's all you need. So you don't need to have any UHF links. You don't have to have any RF links uh, to worry about. As long as you've got IP, which is relatively easy these days, that connects in via Allstar and we've got our transmitter on the air. Now for our receivers, it's similar, I can place our receiver in a very quiet location. As long as we've got IP, we can then connect it into the system. So I've actually got a couple of sites in mind. One site's not that quiet, but it will serve as a good fill-in site. But then I've got a DX site, which I'm going to put another two receivers at. And I can put those on large antennas because I've got plenty of room, I've got plenty of space. It's not a communication site. It's got IP, so I can link all that in. And uh, the DX site's going to have maybe a large antenna like a Yagi or something on 10 metres, maybe pointed at the US, and, uh, and a vertical antenna for just um, regular uh, uh, reception as well. So, And all of those will get voted and the best signal then comes out to the transmitter. So building a 10 metre repeater is actually really cool because of the propagation characteristics and I really, really want to hear some DX on this. So let me know if you've worked a 10 meter repeater before perhaps you have i've worked i think the furthest one is the new york repeater it sounds like it's got a ding dong doorbell let me know in the comments what call sign it is i think it's k k y something or other let me know anyway it's pretty uh pretty easy to determine which repeater it is on there but if you've ever worked fm or you've ever worked an uh, fm repeater on 10 meters then let me know in the comments below all-star can run as a full-blown repeater controller but there are some bits in it that uh, you don't get with a traditional controller. So I've got the RC210 out and I wired that up. So what I've done is I've wired the audio that's coming out of the board here, the uh, voter board. The audio is coming out of here. It's going into the RC210. Then I've got the PTT coming out of here driving the COS or the mute of this. And then audio comes in, then it gets mixed in the controller with IDs and everything, and then gets sent back out to the transmitter. And it actually works. Let's just plug this in. That'll boot up. RCQ10 repeater controller V6.0451. Ready. The key all star. It's actually not 12 a.m. My battery's gone flat in the real-time clock here. So, yeah, that works. I can mix the old repeater controller, which is completely programmed up for the repeater, with the voting system. So, that's kind of cool. I've done a couple of videos on these builds and how the All-Star Link system all works. If you want to check that out, then they'll appear on the screen. But I'm looking forward to getting 10 meters and VK7 RHF on the air soon.